in Jesus' name, welcome, welcome, welcome to our Lenten evening worship service because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, we're excited for this evening as we continue with our Lenten theme to give of oneself for others in need with no expectations. And I invite you, if this is your first time with us this evening, um, there is a worship bulletin on each of the tables um, to follow along with as we lead worship. But before we do that, um, I just want to share, it's exciting as we navigate through this Lenten season, we started off with the food shelf, got to hear about Pass It On thrift store, and this evening we get to hear from Luther Crest. And so we have Pastor Maddie, um, who is the executive director of Luther Crest, and it's an awesome opportunity for us to hear about a Bible camp that is only one hour away in Alexandria, not too far. Um, it is a place that our youth go each and every year when we're not going on a large mission trip. So oftentimes we'll go to Luther Crest one summer, Luther Crest the next, and then we'll talk about where our youth mission trip for our large trip this year is going out to Luther Haven. Um, but it's been a wonderful opportunity to serve, to have our children go and be a part of, and that's just one part of Luther Crest is for us to be a part as a mission trip. But people like myself with my daughters are both going to Luther Crest this summer. And they're going alongside some other friends connected to the Westby family. And so it's neat for us to know that we are connected to Luther Crest. They're connected to the Northwest Minnesota Synod. Um, and they're an important part of one way that our children can engage in faith formation. But Luther Crest offers so much more than youth functions. And I know we'll hear more about that, Pastor Maddie. I won't take any more of your wind, but I just am so excited that you're here. Thank you for making the drive. Thank you for joining us um, for worship this evening and sharing your story. Well, with that, I'm going to pass the microphone off to Alan, who's going to just share again where we're heading on our youth mission trip, and then we'll get ready for our gathering song. Have you broken the news to Maddie that we're not going to Luther Crest this year? And you're leaving it to me to say, oh, geez, I'm sorry, Maddie. <laughs> oh, yes, in August of uh, this summer, um, we're planning a trip out to uh, Coeur d'Alene, Luther Haven. And uh, Maddie's fully aware of that. You attend um, all of these directors' meetings across the nation, and you probably know all of the directors and such. And, and such. Um, the ministry is the same. Um, whether it's at Luther Crest or Luther Haven, they are still touching and impressing the lives of young people and such. And so our hope is to go on out um, this summer, and um, it's going to be a unique camp, a, new, a unique camp experience. And, and I've, I've shared this, and I continue to share it. This year, our people will be giving of themselves, not in a hands-on building project or anything like that, but coming alongside special needs kids. Um, it's called Champ Camp. And it's, an, it's a week-long camp um, for special needs. And our students will buddy system up with individual campers one-on-one -on -one to walk with them as they get to experience a camping experience. And so we're excited about that um, and such. And so our hope is, is to uh, all the funds that are raised during our Lenten season um, will go towards uh, sponsoring and supporting our kids as well as um, the kids are going to be doing our Easter breakfast, uh, sunrise, right after our sunrise service, we'll be serving an Easter breakfast this year as well. So, with all that being said, I invite us to join with our opening hymn, With Joyful Noise. Just about the manger where the baby lay. It's not all about the angels who sang for him that day. It's not all about the shepherds or the bright and shining star. It's not all about the wise men who traveled from afar. It's about the
It's about the cost. It's not just about the good things in this life I've done. It's not all about the treasures of the trophies that I've won. It's not just about the righteousness that I find within. It's all about His precious blood. Save me from my sin. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that I could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross. The beginning of the story is wonderful and great, but it's the ending that will save you. That's why we celebrate. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so we could be born again. It's about that love. About how every drop of blood that flowed from him when it should have been me. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. So that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we con confess our sins, God who is and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you and God for eternity. By what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not followed the river of our hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The scripture reading is from Psalms chapter 84, verses 1 through 12. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh for joy of the living God. Even the, sp the sparrow finds a home, and to swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, and those in whose heart are in highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of ba Becca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Be behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your 
oriented. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he now to trust the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life of the everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Evie. Thank you, David, for reading. For those of you, um, yeah, you guys can come over and sit. Um, go Vikings, okay? <laughs> Majority of our confirmation class um, are at the girls' basketball game up at Concordia, and so we wish them well. I sent the text out to uh, some of the girls that are playing tonight, and, and so we hope that uh, um, they have a great night. Um, I always uh, told my kids, um, you go and you play hard, you play smart, but most importantly, you have fun. And that's the message that I left with them um, earlier the day when I texted them. At this time, I'm going to introduce Maddie from Luther Crest Bible Camp. Um, oh, we got special music. We yeah, we do. <clears throat> and then it's the guest speaker. Special music. How can I relate special to Lee? Yes, Lee is very special. All right, Lee, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. I picked this song out uh, knowing that it would be uh, pretty well attended by the youth, not knowing the basketball team would continue on. But uh, I'm glad for it. And there's a line in this song that kind of reaches out to me. It says, um, so let me love you until you love you again. And when I heard that, I go, hmm, uh, that's, let me love you till I love you again. This song is sung from the perspective of if it was sung by God. So you're running out of prayers to pray You think nobody cares anyway You're thinking all of your sins Go unforgiven A broken heart and broken dreams Sometimes you can't feel anything you wonder how anyone can love you. I love you more than you'll ever know. When you can't hold on, I'll never let you go. So let me love you Until you love you again 
Everything you might hate yourself for, I'll love you more. I love this world, so I sent my son to show you love like you've never known. And even through it all, they crucified him. And as he hung there on that cross, he made sure not one soul was lost. And in his dying words, he whispered to them, I love you more than you'll ever know when you can't hold on I'll never let you go mm, so let me love you until you love you again everything you might hate yourself for I love you more Past the moon, past the stars Past the wounds, past the scars I forgave all your sins Over and over and over And over again I love you more than you'll ever know When you can't hold on I'll never let you go So let me love you Until you love you again Everything you might hate yourself for I love you more Everything you might hate yourself for I love you more Thank you, Lee. Boy, am I ever glad you said something. That was pretty special music and special song, so thank you. This time it is an honor and a privilege for me to introduce our speaker here tonight, um, an individual that I have known a number of years and have worked together with, and uh, I, um, I just respect everything. I've, I've known Maddie since we were a counselor at camp, and then you became on staff and now have moved into the position that you hold. And so welcome to Trinity Church today. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me this evening. It's my pleasure to uh, join you today for worship. Well, uh, good evening, and um, uh, like Alan said, my name is Pastor Maddie. I serve as the executive director out at Luther Crest Bible Camp in Alexandria, Minnesota. It was just a short little drive to get here today, so uh, that was really fun. This is Maggie. And she rules, and she's going to be doing some slides. So snaps for Maggie. Thanks for helping me this evening. Way to go. Um, well, out of just curiosity, who has been to Luther Crest before? Oh, mama. Okay, that's what I love to see. How about Bible camp in general? Who's been to a Bible camp before? All right, that's wonderful. Well, what I am sure is true for you is that if you've had a touch point with Bible Camp or Luther Crest before, you know that it's an impactful story. The ministry that happens out at Bible Camp is particular, distinct, and really makes a difference when it comes to our faith for life. And that's really why I bought into the mission of Luther Crest all those years ago. Like Alan said, you didn't, maybe didn't know this, Alan, but I was a camper at Luther Crest long ago. And then I joined the staff as a counselor, came on as the program director, and now I am serving as the executive director. Um, so I'm really bought into the mission of Luther Crest. And I just want to tell you, before we kind of get into um, what I'd like to talk about today, which is the impact of outdoor ministry, I, I want to just tell you a little bit about, um, about Luther Crest. Luther Crest was 
formed in 1945. Previously, it had been a boys' camp on Lake Carlos. And I know you're all going to know the answer to this, but why was 1945 the year that the boys' camp was sold? It was the end of World War II. That's right. And so it became a Luther Crest Bible camp because a group of pastors came together. And uh, around this time, Lutheran camping was popping up all over the United States. And so you'll find at whatever Lutheran camp you go to, their, their start date, many of them, is around this time. Between the 40s and the 50s is when these Bible camps were starting to pop up around the United States. So Luther Crest was formed in 1945 by a group of pastors in the Alexandria area. And they came together and they said, we need a place set apart for our people, especially our kids, to come and experience God's love and grace and study the Bible together. And that's how Luther Crest came to be. And the first summer they operated was 1946. And they had a myriad of youth programs and a women's week. Has anyone been to women's week at Luther Crest before? All right, that's wonderful. It was one of the first programs that was um, ever at Luther Crest. So Luther Crest has continued all of these years. Um, in those first years, there were no formal directors. It was just all volunteer basis to make the summer happen. And over time, it became a more formalized ministry where you had permanent staff and then um, paid counselors. Can you believe it? We pay our camp counselors. So if you're looking for a summer job, you know an 18 to 22-year-old looking for a summer job, you let, uh, let them know. I'll come and talk to them, okay? Well, we, uh, if you're anything like me and you've been to camp and you know the stories that make an impact, um, I know that you know that it leads to a faith for life. It's one of those things that is uh, sticky in particular. There's a research project going on right now from Sacred Playgrounds. Dr. Jake Sorensen is doing research on why youth ministry is so important for the church. And he has found that there are several things that lead, uh, that we do as church together, that lead to faith for life. And he calls them the big four. And the big four are, I wonder if this rings true to you in your own faith story. The four things are, uh, the first one is Sunday school. Anyone attend Sunday school as a child or church school? Oh, I love that. The second one is Bible camp. The second one is Bible camp. Going to Bible camp as a youth or adult or working at a Bible camp. The third one is campus ministry. And the fourth one is the ELCA youth gathering. He's studying particular the Lutheran church. And the ELCA youth gathering is a big trip uh, national gathering where 30,000 young people gather together. Anyone been to the ELCA youth gathering? All right. That's awesome. So Dr. Sorensen found that those four things were named by a group of people that he researched, and he said, what has led you to a faith for life? He asked pastors, church leaders, lifelong Lutherans. He said, what has led you to a faith for life? 98% of the participants named one of those four things as a faith milestone that led them to a faith for life. So I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty big deal when we, think about, um, when we think about the church. I think we often get worried about um, what's going to happen to the church. It looks different than it did when I was growing up. Maybe it looks smaller than it did when I was growing up. I hear a lot of worry in the church today. I don't know if that rings true to you and your community. But I think in the midst of that worry and fear, there are these glimmers of stories like what happens at Bible camp that shout to us that God is still working in our world today through the ministries uh, like what's here at Trinity, through ministries like Luther Crest, God is still working to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And um, these big four play a big role in how we tell the story of Jesus Christ. So I want to tell you a little bit more about Jake's research, and that's why today I'm going to talk more about just what happens at Luther Crest. I represent Luther Crest. I think it's awesome. But I wanted to be broader than that to tell you really what happens in outdoor ministry as a whole. You know, like Alan said earlier, you know, the ministry is the same. And um, I think what he really meant by that is, is what is happening at those ministries, the community building that happens, that is the same. And so I wanted to talk about the impact of outdoor ministry as a whole. And there is five things that make camp effective. And this is Jake Sorensen's research again. And he uh, did a big research project 
where he was trying to find, okay, we have all these stories about why camp is important and why kids have a great time at camp, but we can't really put our finger on why. Why is it an effective place to do ministry? So he did a big research project and he boiled it down to five fundamentals that come down to why camping ministry is effective. And the first one he found is that camp is, there we go, camp is faith-centered. You say faith-centered. All right, a very participatory congregation. I love it. Camp is faith-centered. So what I mean by that, when you come to Luther Crest, what you're, going to, what you're going to find is that everything that we do at camp leads to faith. And you might be wondering, Maddie, how do you connect your all-camp game to faith? Well, I'll tell you what. Faith is more than just opening our Bibles. Faith is more than just when we worship together. Faith is also about when we are together as God's people named and claimed. And so when we play games together, we are being embodied in the community that Christ has given us. And so everything we do at camp is faith-centered. What I like to do is a little bit of math when I talk to congregations about this, because I think the math helps tell the story a little bit. I'm a little pragmatic. Anyone like me, you need the numbers? No? No, none of you? Okay. Well, I'll give you the numbers. So you might have heard this before, right? If you go to worship once or even twice a week, how many hours is that? You know, 52 to 100 hours, right? In a year, right? Something like that. And at camp, what we do is we embody faith in every experience, and kids are there for a whole week of time. So if you want to do the mental math and add up all the hours that they spend talking about God's community, opening the Bible, worshiping together, it adds up pretty well. And it makes a big impact. So everything we do at camp is faith-centered. The second thing that Jake found is that camp is participatory. And what I mean by participatory is, uh, I think actually our worship service uh, this evening is a great example of what we do at camp. I love that the confirmation students here at Trinity are the ones that are leading this service. What an amazing opportunity to show and model to kids that our faith is not what pastors get up and do and we watch them do it. That's not what our faith is. Our faith is us together. And when we model that we can all worship and we can all be leaders in faith, then we are building leaders for faith for the future. And I think the, that the faith of the next generation is worth everything. And so we make sure that everything we do at camp is participatory. When we cook a meal around the fire, we make sure that everybody has a role to play. Whether you're finding the happy snappy sticks. Anyone, anyone know happy snappy sticks? Yeah, you use that little phrase at home too? Okay. Happy snappy sticks, or if they're, you know, um, getting the water boiling, or if they're making sure that their friends have a place to sit, everybody has a role. Camp is participatory. The third thing he found is that camp is unplugged. This is my favorite one, or one of my favorite ones. When I say unplugged, what comes to your mind? Phones? No internet? Acoustic guitars, I heard. Oh. Yes, exactly. When you unplug something from the wall, exactly, exactly right. Yes, I, you guys nailed it. When we unplug, we put down our devices, we get the screens out of the way, and we focus on community. Now, here's the thing. I don't think that our cell phones and our screens are evil. Do you? No, we don't think they're evil, but they sure do get in the way of community sometimes. And kids today... They need practice on putting the phone down. It's something that I firmly believe is important that we model for kids today how to do that. We need to model how to do it. And so at camp, we practice what that feels like. Now, I'll tell you a little story. Every camp promo that I do, I'll go to the camp uh, or the church and I'll say, let's go to camp, rah, 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 camp. And I will always get hands in the back um, from you know, the 14-year-olds, and they say, hey, can I bring my phone? 
and I say, oh, I'm sorry, we ask that you keep your phone at home, and I always get, oh no, what about my Snapchat streak? And they worry, they worry about the games that they were playing, they worry about keeping in touch with their friends. And I say, you know what? It'll be a good practice for you to put down your phone. I think you can do it. And here's the truth. Every week at camp, I hear whining about putting your phone away. I hear a little bit of crying, maybe a tear or two about putting the phone away. But here's what happens. At the end of the week, on almost every evaluation, kids will say, it felt good. It felt liberating to not be attached to my phone. Can you imagine that? Adults in the room, you imagine putting your phone away for the week. It kind of fills you with anxiety a little bit, right? But here's the deal. There's some freedom, right, when you're not attached to that device. And so we love to be unplugged. We also, um, and before you move on, Maggie, the other way we get unplugged at camp is we're out of routine. We're out of routine, and so then we're, e we're more easily able to tune in to how God is leading us and how God is speaking to us when we're unplugged from routine. It's something where we take ourselves out of what we know and we put ourselves into the unknown, and we're more aware. Our senses are heightened, and we're more aware of what God is doing in our own lives. The fourth thing that Jake found is that camp is a safe space. Camp is a safe space. And I know safe space can be a hot button term. And what I mean by safe is it's safe because at Luther Crest, we go through an evaluation process. We're accredited by the American Camping Association. We hire our staff and we background check them and we train them for what they're going to do. We bring in pastors to help us craft Bible studies. People are supervised and accompanied in all their activities. And they're trained in talking to kids about difficult topics. Difficult topics about faith in a way where they don't face judgment. When I was a confirmation student, my biggest hang-up about God, for real, were the dinosaurs. And I am not making that up. I sat and sat for hours wondering, how could we have dinosaurs and God? I don't understand. And if I hadn't had a place to ask that question without fear, I don't know how I would have reconciled my faith. But at camp, I was able to ask that question to my counselor without fear that she would push me away or belittle me for not knowing the answer or not having a faith that was strong enough. Camp is a safe place to explore those deep questions of faith that we all have. And the last thing that Jake Sorensen found is that, oh, the, oh, oh, go back one. One more, one more, one more. There it is. Ah, so it's actually the second thing that he found. Okay, the second thing, but the last one that we'll talk about today that he found is that camp is relational. And I think um, probably if you were to talk to a camper today, they will tell you that this is the reason that they want to come back to camp. It's because of the friendships that they made or renewed when they were at camp. When I talk to the camp counselors about coming and working on for another season, the community is what they say is the reason they want to come back to camp. But I know that it's God at the root of that community that is drawing them in. Not just a friendship, but a friendship that is rooted in Christ. Everything that we do at camp is relational. Thank you, Maggie, for going back all that way. Wow. So those are the five fundamentals of camp. We're faith-centered, we're relational, we're unplugged, we are a safe space. I missed one in there. Which one did I miss? We're participatory. Thank you. We're participatory, the five fundamentals of camp, and why camping ministry is effective for leading kids to a faith for life. And that is really the thing that has drawn me into the ministry of Luther Crest and outdoor ministry as a whole, is that it's distinct from the church because it's so laser focused on that building community that that becomes the root of what we do. And then when we laser focus on building community, the worships that we do are more engaging the Bible studies that we do are more uplifting, and the relationships we build are more life-giving.
And it's all because we do it in the name of Jesus Christ. And with that, if we go to the next, oh, we'll have to go to actually the last slide, Maggie. Man, I really mixed you up, didn't I? I'll just end with this. Our mission statement at Luther Crust is to inspire faith, community, and stewardship in God's creation. And the way that we do that is through summer camp, through our retreats and our ministries in the whole year-round season, and through our relationships with churches where we send out materials and curriculum and staff to uplift their ministries. Those are the ways that we do uh, this work together. And with that, Maggie and I would like to say thank you very much uh, for having me today to talk about Luther Crest. Um, I'll stay after worship if you have any questions about the ministry of Luther Crest, what we're doing, the projects that we're working on, some of our initiatives and our strategic plan. Would love to share with you about some of the plans for the future. And I'm honored to tell you that we are geared up for one awesome summer. We've got a full summer roster of summer camp counselors, and we only have about 80 spots left in the summer camp season. So if you know someone who is looking to go to summer camp this year, tell them to sign up as soon as possible because we're running out of space. It's the best problem to have. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone, for having me today. And we're gonna, we, we're, we open up the floor for questions. <gasps> That's the best. Thank okay. you. Okay, then I'll stay here right here for questions. <laughs> and we've got a couple mics. And the reason the mics are helpful is not because whether or not Pastor Maddie can hear you, but we can get your question on video. So if someone's worshiping from home, they can also hear the question and answer. So if you can use the mics, that would be super helpful. Evie, I'm faster. <laughs> What's the most popular activity? Oh, that is a good question. I would say there are two, oh, oh there's three. There's, there's three most popular activities. The first one um, is new to me, but probably old to you. It's Gaga Ball. Gaga <laughs> Ball is, um, do you have a Gaga Ball pit here? It's, um, we have, yes, we have funds that have been donated uh, to the church in memory of an individual that this summer we'll be building a Gaga pit, yes. And you know how. And we know how. All Bye. right. <laughs> all right, that's awesome. Um, you all came and helped us build a Gaga Ball pit at Luther Cross last year, so thank you very much. So Gaga Ball is, is probably the most popular, I would say swimming in any activity on Lake Carlos is a really popular activity. And then we have a ropes course at Luther Crest. It's a high ropes course. And we have a zip line that zips kids into the trees. And a fun fact that you should know is that um, I've only heard two people swear on the zip line before, and they were both pastors. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maggie, you've got a question. Here, okay, faster. here we go. How many people do you have in your camp every year? Oh, good question, Maggie. Well, um, we serve about 2,500 campers every summer. And um, half of those are on-site residential overnight campers, and half of them are day campers uh, in congregations around Minnesota, North Dakota, Wisconsin. And, um, but we also have retreat guests that come, and retreats uh, are about 7,000 people in retreats every year um, that we serve. And Luther Crest also hosts a worship service every Sunday from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And that worship service um, is usually between 700 to 1,000 participants on one Sunday service. And they come and they worship down by the lake, and they even boat in. People will boat in to this worship service. It's pretty cool. You come and check it out sometime. Bring, bring pastor. Okay, there we go. Do you have different grades? Um, cabin? So yes. you can put different girls and boys? Yes. So, like, how are the campers divided? Yeah. That's a great question. So we serve all kinds of different communities each week. And part of Luther Crest philosophy is to make sure that families and churches can send all ages the same week. 
to strengthen their own church community as well as build community with others. And so if you come to Luthercrest, what you'll find is that we have all ages, an intergenerational group of people every single week. And so the way that we divide the cabins out is if you register for camp, you can put in your cabin request. So Abigail, if you wanted to go with your sister, for instance, you could say, I want to be with Maggie. Or if you did not want to be with Maggie, (laughs) you could say, I do not want to be with Maggie. And we would keep you apart or together based on what you wanted to do. But the other way that we divide cabins out is we make sure they're in like grades Um, And depending on the church, we'll make sure they're with the church. Or if the church really wants them to meet other people, we'll make sure they're with people from different churches. And the boys stay in one cabin, and the girls stay in a different cabin. Is that part of your question, too? Yeah, you got it. Is is Luther Quest uh, financially stable, or do you struggle each year to make ends meet? Well, this is my favorite question. Uh, That's so awesome. I would say that Luther Crest has uh, been blessed um, financially uh, through the gifts of the church and um, through the excitement of our community. Um, We're in a pretty stable position uh, as far as finances go. But as you know, because uh, it's a ministry of the church, uh, there is always work to be done when it comes to fundraising. And um, I, I, because you're people of God in a church building, you know that um, when, when the politics of the world kind of get in the way of us being church together, it can, it can create hardships to make ends meet. And, then, and I'll say that we're so blessed and I feel so confident in our financial position. And I'll say that the cost of camp uh, for us, has has gone up exponentially since COVID, with um, with changes in um, the industry standard for salaries for individuals, um, for just like utilities and food and you know kind of like some of that stuff we don't think about. Uh, and also Luther Cross. Oh, can I uh, can I whine to you for a second? I will. Okay. The, um, we had a tornado. Uh, two summers ago, and it it took down um, roofs and um, trees, and it was a huge financial um, or insurance claim for a camp, as you can imagine. And you know what happens when you've got a big... Everyone nod at me. All the adults in the room nod at me. You know where I'm going with this. Every time you have a big insurance claim, you all know what happens. So um, those those things are tough on little organizations like like us. And you and I know I can say that to you because you guys are church together. You know what that you know what that looks like. But ultimately, we're really blessed. We've had great leadership over the past years in our boards and directors that have put us in a strong financial position. So does has the cost because your costs go up. How about the cost for individual campers? Yes, yes. Uh, the, oh, yes, this is the hard stuff. So first I'll say this. We never turn away a camper that wants to come to camp because of a financial reason. We find a way to make sure that they can get to camp through scholarships between the scholarship fund that we have at Luther Crest and partnering with their home congregation to say, how can we raise funds for this individual to come to camp? Uh, but the cost of camp has gone up since COVID. And we do that, um, uh, we're part of uh, an organization of camping ministries. And, and so we, are, we price ourselves with camps that are like ours. And so, um, and we work together to make sure that we can keep the cost as low as we can and make sure that our scholarships are always available. And there's great supporters of uh, folks that want to get kids to camp and make sure that that can happen. But you're, you're, you're right. When the cost goes up, then the cost of camp goes up too. Yep. I'm done. Do you still do theme uh, weeks like basketball camp or? Oh the different themes they used to do that. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we have, this is so interesting. I wonder what you'll think about this. So probably 15 years ago, 20 years ago, um, Bible camp being participation was going down, 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 down. And so there was a lot of innovative thinking and saying, well, okay, what are we going to do to make sure kids can come to camp so we can live out this mission? So, um, so it wasn't about basketball. It was, it was, how can we how can we engage kids to want to come to camp so that we can do this? And so those specialty programs like basketball camp, volleyball camp, night owl, 
extreme camp, those, those types of camps, that's where they were born from. And so we had all kinds, um, actually we used to run 23 programs in a week. And I can say that because I was the program director and it was bananas. And, um, but, it, but also so, so awesome. Um, we have found that our wait lists are all about our classic camp programs right now. And I don't know if that's a post-COVID thing um, or not. But right now, our classic camp programs that are just about coming to camp in the classic way, those are the camps that fill up like that. And the ones that we have big wait lists for. Um, our senior high program is no cost. And um, our senior high program is the one that we have the most wait lists for. And it's a classic senior high program. And um, like, thanks be to God, uh, senior high kids in the church. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so no, we haven't done as many specialty programs in the post-COVID time. Mm -hmm. You do it all year camp. Yes, that's a great question. Um, we do summer camp for about 12 weeks, two weeks of staff training and then 10 weeks of summer camp. But we are operational all year round, where we'll serve retreat groups and other folks to come in. So all of our buildings, all of the things that we have are operational year round. That's a great question. Another question I get from kids all the time is, do your counselors live here all the time? And that's my favorite. I'm always like, yeah, they do. <laughs> Maddie, earlier you asked the question of any of these people that were here that have been to camp, have been to Luther Crest camp. If you raise your hand, if you've been to Luther Crest camp. Okay. Those of you that are um, veterans and over the age of 18, um, Luther Crest has changed immensely over the last um, five to eight years. And um, Matthew, if you just want to explain what some of those major changes that have taken place, you know, um, five, ten years ago to now. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we went through a capital campaign process beginning in 2011 where we were assessing the needs of the Bible camp. And the truth is, is that we were serving very few campers, maybe 400 campers in a summer, uh, but we had the capacity to serve, you know, 1,500 campers. So it was, um, it was time to assess what was going on there. And in that assessment, they found some programmatic needs that needed to be addressed. But mostly what they found is that the facilities were not able to serve the people we wanted to serve. So we did a big capital uh, campaign where we were going to assess our cabins. If you um, went to camp, who, who went to camp in like 19... In, well... Before, okay. Before Maddie was born. No, no, you know what? I won't go, I won't go there. But I'll just, in your head, you can think, you know, if you came to camp in, 19, um, in 1950, those cabins were the same as the cabins that we were putting kids in in 2015. Okay? So think about that. Uh, the, the cabins were the same buildings. And um, they, they were not... Um, uh, they were not the best. They were not comfortable. They were not comfortable. They were not comfortable. And so we were uh, addressing that. And then as we addressed some of these um, facility needs, we also increased our participation. And so then suddenly our dining hall no longer could fit the number of people that were coming to camp. So we needed to find a way to expand the dining hall. And we needed to figure out a way to make all of our buildings year-round so that we could host groups year-round. And so in uh, 2017 is the first, um, the first building project that we did. And we renovated or rebuilt all of the cabins that were at Luther Crest. And I know Alan and I'm sure the other folks from, uh, from Trinity were a part of the building project. We had volunteers from all over Minnesota come and help us build these cabins. Now these cabins, I'll tell you, were controversial. And here's why, here's why. There was, um, especially from if you were an alumni of, of camp, like you worked at camp as a camp counselor, because what we did is we built these cabins, and they all had bathrooms in them, and they all had air conditioning and heating in them, and the camp counselors were not happy. They were like, hey, if we can rough it, then everyone can rough it. 
And um, there's something to be said, though, um, of, of, yes, we want to introduce um, being in God's creation. But what we found as we, you know, surveyed our, the people we serve is that most of our kids that were coming to camp had never had an outdoor experience before. And so to, to put them from no experience to roughing it in the, basically the outdoors the whole week, it, it was too much. It was too much for them to, um, it was too much of a shock to their system. And the other thing is just from a hospitality perspective is that the dignity of every camper denotes that they should have a bathroom that is easily accessible to them, where they're not like wrapped in a towel running from the bathhouse to their cabin. And the dignity of every camper says that that's important, that we have a private bathroom for them to go. And so we did that. And um, we also found that there are lots of hospitality reasons to have air conditioning, right? There are some kids that can't go to camp because they have asthma. And by putting air conditioning in the cabin space, we made it possible for them to come to camp. And so it was a big, big project um, that we took on. And, and thanks to all the volunteers that helped us accomplish that task, but if you drive into Luther Crest today and you haven't been there since, you know, 2016 or before, it's a whole new camp. We even have a paved driveway. I know, I know. It's the big time. Yeah, actually, one of my camping director friends, she came to visit and um, she was like, what is this place, Bougie Crest? <laughs> so, and I said, yep, you got it. One of the interesting things, Maddie, I want to just lift out when you mentioned something about um, your counselors, you lose the, um, the atmosphere of camp, and that was huge. I happened to be on um, the board when it was first began to speak about uh, Luther Crest's um, changing some things, and that was the number one thing that was talked about was how can we upgrade camp build new cabins, but yet still have the roughing it outdoor feeling. You know what the answer was to it? Rough cut lumber on the sidewalls of the camp. And, I, and, that, and that, that satisfied. I mean, it, you, you walk inside the cabins, the beautiful cabins, you know, but it's kind of a rough cut lumber that's, you know, on the side. It's not the luxurious paneling or sheetrock or anything like that. And so it was an interesting point when you said that, but mm -hmm. it was something that was taken into consideration when um, the camp was making those changes and such. Yeah, you betcha. And even eight years later, when you walk in those cabins, it still smells like a beautiful wood. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go one, one step further, Alan, and say uh, the, the, reason, the reason that camp can continue to make an impact, even if we worry about, you know, oh, the church is changing and what are we going to, how many times have we heard that in the church? Oh, this is just how we do it and we can't change, you know? Um, but the reason that we can still be church together in a changing church, or we can still be camped together when our buildings look different, is because of things like this. It's because of the mission that we share, and it's because we share it in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why we can do those things, you know? Because was camp was never about the cabins. It was always about sharing the good news. It was always about sharing the good news, which is I, every change that you have in church, too. It's, um, you know, it's never about which new, so that we can tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. So. All right, do we have any other questions? All right. Well, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor Matty. I just want to address everyone. And thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you for sharing these stories and the mission of Luther Crest that we are connected to, not only through Synod, but through just a partnering conference. Um, and it's just wonderful to see how well they're doing. And we're, it's just wonderful to see your leadership continue to inspire and it's wonderful as a parent for me, knowing that my daughters are underneath the leadership of Pastor Maddie and her team, and I'm in full confidence when they leave home that they are in a good place with good people um, that care and that we trust and we appreciate is an essential part of the faith formation of my children and learning about their faith in Jesus. So thank you for that.
and as anybody connected to Trinity um, is important, is we do have money set aside to help with those scholarships, so we do are able to um, offset some of those costs that were mentioned, and so that we can help children go to Luther Crest connected to our congregation, and, and it's an important part. So I know that's been in place for a long time. Luther Crest has been doing wonderful ministry for a long time, and we hope to just continue that partnership and appreciate your support for our youth, our children, and really our congregation as a whole. All right, as we close out the evening, I'll invite Joyful Noise or to go up and uh, lead us in our last song. And uh, I know that um, some of you are eager to head on home and uh, pull up the YouTube channel, I believe. Pastor Eric, they're on YouTube, right? You told me that. Live? Basketball game? Okay, well, you'll find it. Something like that. But anyway, we, uh, we hope well for, the, for the, the girls that are playing this evening. So with that all being said, let's, uh, I'll leave you with this blessing as we go out into this night. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Yeah, you can stand. Good and bad times, keep looking for the light. In Jesus. Here we go. Oh,